Yo yo, welcome to lesson 11. I hope that everybody enjoyed their Christmas. In lesson 10, we talked about lists, but we didn't really get to cover how they are used in real life systems. So for this lesson, we will talk about loops, which is usually used along with lists. A lot of people have trouble understanding loops, so let's try to break this concept down. Loops are used to repeat a sequence of instructions until a condition is met. Let's do a simple example together. Every day, it is recommended that we eat three meals a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So for breakfast, I usually have cereal. For lunch, I like to eat banh mi. And for dinner, I like to eat some pho. So to keep this example simple, the instructions that we will be repeating each day is eat breakfast, eat lunch, and eat dinner. To write these instructions in code, all we have to do is print eat breakfast, print eat lunch, and then print eat dinner. And if we run the code, we're going to see eat breakfast, eat lunch, and eat dinner. Cool, so that's for one day only. So let's extend this example to a week. So we're gonna need to do this seven times in total. So what we can do is we can copy these three lines seven times. So let's do that. Copy and paste. And as you can see, it says eat breakfast, eat lunch, and eat dinner seven times. So right now our code looks pretty messy. We have 27 lines of code in total just to do something very simple. We can clean this code up very easily by putting it inside a function. So let's create a function called eat meals, define eat meals, and now we can delete all of the lines below. And now let's hit run. Nothing happens because we have to call this function. So let's call our function eat meals, and then let's click run. So now we see it one time, and now if we want it seven times, we just have to copy this seven times. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So now if we run our code, we're gonna see eat breakfast, eat lunch, eat dinner seven times. But now, as you can see, we reduced from 27 lines of code to only 12 lines of code, which is awesome. Okay, now what if we need to do this for a whole year? I don't want to copy and paste this 365 times. Instead, we could use a loop here and remove the need to copy and paste code. So for this example, we want to call the function eat meals 365 times. So the condition for how many times we want to run this loop is 365 times. To write a loop in Python, it is very simple. All you need to do is start the statement with for, F-O-R, and then you provide a name for the variable to keep track of the current iteration. In general, a lot of people like to use I or index. So let's stick with index to be clear. And then you type in, I-N, and then you type range, and then you open the parentheses and you provide a start and an end value. And then you end the statement with a colon. And then after that, you want to indent and then provide it the block of code that you want to repeat. In general, like a list, we like to start our range from zero. And then for the end value, you just provided the value that you want to loop up to. So in our case, we want to loop up to 365 times. So our end value will be 365. One thing to note is that the end value is non-inclusive. What this means is this index will be greater than or equal to zero, and it will be less than 365. So in total, we will repeat this logic 365 times and we'll start at zero and we will only go up to 365. So the last value that we'll go up to is 364. And if you want to start at one instead of zero, all you have to do is add one to the start and the end values. So instead of starting at zero, we'll start at one uh, and then we'll end at 366 instead. Before we jump to code, I just want to explain this index value a bit more. Basically, you can think of this index value as a counter. So it keeps track of what iteration we are currently at. So for our example, since we're dealing with the days in a year, this index can be thought of as the current day. So instead of calling this index, let's call it day for our example. Let me show you how this works with a smaller example. So instead of doing 365, let's do seven instead. Uh, let me erase this. So our range will be zero to seven. Uh, so basically the numbers in the range from zero to seven are zero. <laughs> And we don't write seven because it is non-inclusive. So like a list, it is easy to understand a loop by drawing it out. So write these numbers out and then put it in a rectangle. So basically what you want to do is either use a finger or a pencil to point at the numbers. So at first, the first iteration will be at index zero. And then what the code will do is it's going to print breakfast, lunch, and then dinner. Once that is complete, it will move on to the next index in the range. So the next one is one. And then it will print breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then it goes to two, and then it prints everything out. And then three, prints everything out. 
four, print everything out, five, print everything out, and then finally six, print everything out, and then this arrow will move outside of our range, and then that's when it stops. So if you count all of the numbers in the range, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So that means we will do a total of seven iterations. And that's basically how a for loop works. Cool, now let's rewrite our code with a loop. For day in range zero to seven, colon, and now we can call eat meals. And let's comment this code out, and now let's click run. Cool, as you can see, we did the same thing in only two lines of code, which is even better. And if we want to do this 365 times, all we have to do is change seven to 365. And now let's run the code. It's hard to see that we did this 365 times. So let me prove this to you. Let's add a variable called counter and let's set it to zero. And after each iteration of the loop, we are going to add one to the counter. So this way at the end, we'll know how many times this loop was executed. So now let's hit enter and then backspace. So that way we're not writing the logic inside the loop. And now let's type print uh, total and let's put the counter. And now let's run the code. And as you can see at the bottom, the total is 365. Oh yeah, I also want to show you what the day represents. So let's also print that out as well. So let's print uh, current day and let's put the day, which is this variable here. And then now let's click run the code. And as you can see, this day increments by one each time and then it goes all the way up to 364. So because the end value is 365, the loop goes up to 364 and then it stops. So like I mentioned before, if we want to start at one instead, we'll have to add one to the start and the end value. So let's change this to a one. And then if we add one to 365, that'll be 366. And now let's run our code again. And now as you can see, if we scroll up, okay, so it looks like on Replit, it cuts the output out. So we can't see the stuff from the beginning. Um, but as you can see, here's 110 and then 111 and then 112. And then finally at the end, we at least go up to 365. And as you can see, the total is also 365. So nothing has really changed except for this day. So let me revert this to seven just to illustrate this example. And now let's run the code. And as you can see, we'll start our day at one and we only go up to six. There's a total of six, which is incorrect. And that's why we need to add one to the end value. So now let's add one to seven, which is eight. And let's hit run again. And as you can see, our current day starts at one and the last iteration is at seven and we have looped a total of seven times. Cool, and that's how you write a simple for loop in Python. Just a quick recap, to write a for loop, we have to start the statement with four and then we provide it a variable name to keep track of the iteration. And in general, people like to use I or index. And then the next keyword is in and then you provide a range with a start and an end value. After that, you indent and then you provide a block of logic that you would like to repeat. Hopefully this lesson made sense. Here are two problems that you can try on your own. Uh, print one to 100 with a loop and print hello world 50 times. Try this out and if you have questions, please leave it in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe for more content.